hope when you take that jump, you don't feel the fall. Hope when the water rises, you build a wall. Hope when the crowd screams out, you're screaming your name. Hope if everybody runs, you choose to stay. Hope that you fall in love and it hurts so bad. Good afternoon, and welcome to the sixth graduation for the Bellevue Big Picture School. Welcome to the class of 2020, parents, families, guests, faculty, and district staff. Today is devoted to celebrating our seniors' accomplishments. You'll be treated with words of wisdom and inspiration. Take from these speeches pieces that work for you, as you are all ready to embark on another chapter of your lives. The following will be speaking tonight. Grace Huxtable, Eleanor Lindenmeyer, Anna Morin, Matt Stokes, and Dr. Francine Weist from the Bellevue School Board of Directors. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the incredible Big Picture staff. You are a dedicated group who is committed to providing each and every student a rigorous and empowering education. You have devoted endless hours providing academic and emotional support to your students as they experience the peaks and valleys on their progression into adulthood, 
especially these last few weeks during the school closures related to the global pandemic. You readily adapted to a virtual learning environment within a few days' notice and continued to build relationships with your students while working remotely. You are truly a dream team to lead. I'd also like to thank all the parents and families for your ongoing support of these soon-to-be graduates. Those of you who are viewing from home today have positively impacted the lives of one or more of these students, and what a difference you have made. From the entire Big Picture staff, I'd like to extend a thank you to all of you for your efforts in serving as positive role models, assisting students in goal setting and achievement, and in providing support when needed to raise these students to the fine young adults they've become. And to my beloved seniors, during your seven years here, you've experienced the feelings of excitement and apprehension, joy and sadness, curiosity and wonder. I am constantly impressed by your outpouring of emotion, your sense of community and desire to succeed. The next few weeks, months and years will be filled with many more emotions as you embrace new challenges. Whether that involves attending college, traveling the world, entering the workforce, or pursuing a passion, reflect on the growth you've experienced over the last few years. It's truly impressive. Certainly none of us expected your senior year to end like this, impacted by a global pandemic with three months of school closure and virtual learning under Washington State stay-at-home orders. When we left school on March 12th, I did not anticipate that day would be our last time altogether on campus. I know none of this is ideal, and the loss of traditional senior events has been a struggle for many of you. You had visions of something very different than a virtual graduation done on Teams, as did I. Not only will the class of 2020 be remembered as the first, and hopefully only, class to have a virtual commencement ceremony, you will be remembered for your resilience. You are like no class we have ever seen. I have been impressed with your resilience and flexibility, not only during these challenging times, but in the last seven years I have known most of you. Big Picture has thrown you many curveballs, whether that be the challenges associated with navigating pursuing your interest in a freedom project, securing internships independently, or accepting feedback at exhibitions. We have asked you to collaborate nonstop with peers in your grade and across the school for various projects, and to engage in building our school community during some of those wacky PMUs. Each time you have risen to the challenge and exceeded our expectations, growing, learning, and supporting each other in the process. I have no doubt that you will continue to do this with whatever curveballs come your way. While a global pandemic is hopefully a once in a lifetime challenge for all of us to work through, you will, without a doubt, have other personal challenges to navigate. These will require continued flexibility, adaptability, perseverance, resilience, creative problem solving, and advocating for yourself and others. I feel fully confident that you will be able to tackle these challenges and that you will thrive in so doing. It brings me immense joy to see you seniors ready to step into the world and enter life after high school. This class has students who have started nonprofits, written plays, and led restorative and social justice work with adults in our community. There are students passionate about physics, teaching, creating video games, marketing, racial equity, and music. There are students deeply committed to their faith, to the military, and to understanding the ideas of great philosophers. Seniors in this class have had internships this year in the following fields or locations, emergency preparedness, the arts, political campaigns, graphic design, racial equity, journalism, leadership, healthcare, religion, Bellevue City Hall, education, IT, health and well-being, animal care, dentistry, fire safety, and environmental sustainability. In addition, individuals from the class of 2020 have learned to stand up for others, to advocate for social justice, and to lead with purpose. I feel confident knowing you are prepared for the challenges of the 21st century. You know how to use technology to work in groups, 
to lead and persevere, to advocate, to meet most deadlines, to focus, to tackle insurmountable obstacles, to care and love, and most importantly, to question. Oh, the questions I've been asked by all of you these last seven years. I have not only seen members of your class grow as individuals, but as a collective. You are a small but mighty family of wonderful, unique students who care greatly about each other. As you continue down the road of life, use your map and make good choices, enjoy the scenery around you, and cherish your traveling companions. The journey is more important than the destination. Remember the places you have been and yearn to explore new ones, both internally and externally. Keep challenging yourself and never settle. You are all capable of greatness. And don't shy away from the struggle that awaits. When you see a clear path in front of you, that is the path of someone who has walked before you. That is not your path. Yours will unfold with twists and turns and bumps and detours, as well as waterfalls, rainbows, and majestic mountains. At times, it'll be hard and not at all what you envisioned. Push through, phone a friend, and embrace the challenge. And know that what becomes your reality on this journey oftentimes far surpasses what you had initially envisioned. My vision for this school was certainly not as difficult as this journey has been. There have been many challenges and bumps and detours and 26 amazing individuals of this class who have been my waterfalls, rainbows, and majestic mountains. And what Bellevue Big Picture School is becoming largely due to the traveling companions on this journey with me, our staff, families, and students, far exceeds my expectations from 10 years ago when this school was just a glimmer of an idea. Seniors, as you leave big picture, know that I carry a piece of each of you within my heart. You are awesome individuals with promise, passion, and poise. Push the envelope, raise the bar, and let your voices be heard in our world. Challenge the systemic inequities that exist, walk as allies with each other, and live with purpose in your life. Thank you for being that unique, loud, crazy, passionate group you are. Cherish your friendships and go off into this world knowing that you have a big picture family. I truly feel privileged to have been on this journey with you. Best wishes for a great future. Believe in yourselves as I believe in each of you. Enjoy this afternoon. You have all earned it. Congratulations. It is now time for our first student speaker. Please join me in welcoming our faculty selected student speaker, Grace Huxtable. Hello fellow classmates, teachers and admin, family and friends. Welcome to the 2020 re graduation reality show. I'm your host for like two minutes, Grace Huxtable. Sit back on your comfy couch, grab your popcorn and relax while you experience graduation from the comfort of your own home. We're out here living in the future. Anyway, I bet you weren't expecting me to be up here. Uh, neither was I. If ninth grade Grace saw me right now, she would probably collapse from secondhand anxiety. Uh, but before you pass out, little Grace, look, you, you did it. Things really do get better. Uh, you're in the real world now, and you get to use Wikipedia as a source. Little Grace, you are done. Well, you're not, but I am. I'm so glad I'm not you anymore. Anyway, a couple weeks ago, a couple, or some, someone asked me how Big Picture was different from a normal high school. I wanted to share a few of the points that I made, because Big Picture isn't like the other schools, and that's something we're celebrating. So you know you're at Big Picture when on your first day of school, your teacher very sternly tells you and your classmates that he's not going to spoon feed you information, that he's not gonna mama bird all the facts into your brain because that's not how learning works. You know you're at Big Picture when you hear the phrase, is this a summative grade over three times a day? You know you're at Big Picture when you remember the time a teacher read a chapter of Twilight out loud on the bus back home from a, from a field trip because we'd earned it. You know you're at Big Picture when you've high-fived or dapped up Max Stokes in the hallway at least once. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, did I say hallway? I meant to say freezing cold sidewalk, surrounded by chain link fence and unwelcoming cold brick. 
Bonus points if you were still waiting for a teacher outside in the dead of winter, 10 minutes after school was supposed to start. You know you're at big picture when the words, the middle schoolers are coming, strikes fear into your heart, for you are about to lose half your lunchtime to hundreds of screaming children. You know you're at big picture when there's always a group of seniors talking loudly in the back of your class, disrupting the peaceful learning environment and having a great time, and you're one of them. And you know you're at big picture when you can walk into any classroom feeling like your life is falling apart around you and walk back out feeling loved, cared for, and just a little bit more ready to face the world again. You know you're at big picture when your advisor has completely changed your life. You know you're at big picture when you can watch funny animal videos, laugh about backyard chickens, play music, and check for, chat for hours with your history teacher. You know you're at big picture when by the end of freshman year, you know how to conduct interviews, cold call and cold email, pitch an elevator speech and conduct yourself at a professional workplace. Finally, you know you're at big picture when the community drives to your house on Fridays to deliver, to deliver senior care packages to try and make your day a little brighter. And that leads us to the present. I, I can't ignore the elephant in the room or rather the several billion virus shaped elephants that are probably in this room. As much as I'd like to pretend this just isn't happening and I'm making this speech to an auditorium full of my family and friends, I need to address it because it is happening. The past couple months have been really, really difficult for us. In various unique ways for sure, but difficult all the same. The way that I see it, the class of 2020 is a phoenix. Everything is burnt down around us. Our everyday lives, the activities we love to do, our senior year, our plans for the future, everything. In fact, it's still burning. Thus, online graduation ceremony is part of the flames. But the best thing about fire is that it eventually dies. Trust me, I may know one or two firefighters. And once this fire dies down to coals, just like a phoenix, we will rise right back up out of the ashes, so much better than we were when this started. And then we'll get right back to our everyday routine of eating princesses, wrecking havoc on medieval villages, and doing whatever it is phoenixes do. We are relentlessly resilient. I know you all, and I know that every single one of you will come out of this storm on top, not only prevailing, but with the storm completely tamed, and you will unleash that storm upon any barrier that stands in your way. However, despite all these things that will happen, the flames are still burning for now. Please go easy on yourself. We all powerful phoenixes still struggle with our mental health, still struggle with our own personal battles. Just remember that every day is a new day. So get up, shine your shoes, stand up against injustice, delete that browser history and get to it. Do the best you can. Thank you. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce the student selected faculty speaker, Anna Morin. Welcome friends, parents, families, big picture staff, Dr. Weist, the class of 2020 and your pets. I'm not a fan of public speaking, as a matter of fact, the last time that I can remember giving a written speech to a large crowd was my eighth grade graduation. Since I teach all the seniors two graduation required classes, I get to know them really well. I have asked every class before you to choose a different staff member to speak. Truly, I'm happy to sing the greatest love to you or dance madly about to let it go for you when it's just us in the room. But standing in front of a crowd, well, that's another matter. Even as I write this, weeks before you're watching this, I can feel my heart speed up and taste adrenaline. Luckily for me, you're not even here right now, most of you. Instead, I'll just picture you as you are, in your pajamas. Since most of you graduates are probably still in your beds, logged into this ceremony with your cameras blocked, just like these last couple of months. Since I couldn't find my eighth grade speech in my attic, I asked others for ideas about what to say, some helpful suggestions. Read one of President Obama's commencement speeches. Lip sync to one of President Obama's commencement speeches. Play the video of one of President Obama's commencement speeches while I dub the audio. Just play one of President Obama's commencement speeches straight up. Due to copyright laws, I'm unable to do any of these options, so you've got me instead. Here's what I know about graduation speeches. They are often moving, humorous, and heartfelt, full of unsolicited advice. By the way, don't forget to put your bills on auto pay. I know that I annually crack up and tear up when listening to them. I also know that all speakers are trying to convey wisdom to send with you into the next phase of your life. But when it comes down to it, it's really hard to remember what exactly the speaker discussed in their speech. Years ago, I learned that if I want students to learn something, they need to make meaning of it for themselves. 
and then they, you, have to repeat that learning over and over and over again until it somehow sticks in your brain. So in this speech, rather than trying to convey something new and important to you, I want to remind you of what you already know, what you carry within you at all times to draw on a strength now and in the years ahead. That's why I asked you all to reflect in your OneNotes a few weeks ago. I also wanted help writing this speech, so thank you for writing material for me. I asked what you learned in senior English and race gov this year that you would want to remember in 10 years. Your responses gave me hope because you learned the heart of what I wanted you to learn. Throughout your reflections, three key themes emerged. One, you believe it's important to write well and you've grown as writers. You know that you will communicate differently based on the context and purpose of what you want to communicate about. You know that the form your writing takes depends on the purpose and your audience. You've moved beyond five paragraph essays. This all might sound academic, but this matters because writing matters. You will write your whole life for so many different reasons. Knowing how to craft an argument, how to generate ideas, how to reflect, and how to grab your readers through vivid description matters. You are also committed to supporting your claims with credible evidence. We need that more than ever now. Two, you believe that understanding your racial identity and privilege, along with the history of racism in this country, matters. You know that your experience of the world is shaped by your race. As we reel from the murder of George Floyd, you have historical context and know that his death is one of so many stretching back centuries. You know that being anti-racist means actively engaging in difficult conversations, and you know how to experience discomfort in order to learn from and with others. You know that you will make mistakes and how imperative it is that you engage anyway. Three. You believe that your voice matters. You know how to inform yourselves and how to vote. You learned how many people have struggled for the right to vote and how even today, these rights can be and are infringed upon. You won't take your right to vote for granted. And you are registered to vote, ready to mail in your ballot in August and November, but you know that there are also elections in August. From our trip to Olympia, you learned that your legislators are people, sometimes inspiring and sometimes disappointing. You learned how laws are made and how everyday citizens can and should influence the process. You know how to engage in democracy. And there is more that some of you knew prior to this pandemic and some of you are learning right now. When we experience grief, trauma, and tragedy, we have to make it through each day, trudging through the muck and molasses-like minutes. During this time, we have a choice to make, bury our heads in the sand or engage with others. After our first son died, I learned how many other people had lost children. I wasn't alone in my suffering and that gave me great comfort. When we grieve, if we choose, we can grow our capacity to appreciate the joys in life, big and small, and our ability to relate to others. Our compassion for each other can grow, along with our resilience and strength. There are many different kinds of loss. And what we are experiencing right now with this remote graduation is one of them. I wish that we were together in person, checking out Joey's custom painted shoes, or wondering what Johan was going to do when he accepts his diploma. Instead, we meet over teams. We have a choice in these hard times, to withdraw from each other or engage each other. Engaging means acknowledging the systemic racism we all live in and actively fighting it. Engaging means voting. Engaging means choosing to take in the news as painful as it is. Engaging means listening to someone who disagrees with you trying to understand their perspective. Engaging means understanding that you may not be right and honoring the full humanity of the person you're listening to. Engaging means understanding your responses to the world around you. And with every choice you make to engage, you will grow in your capacity, your compassion, and your resilience. I know that you all choose to engage. You care deeply for each other and for your larger world. Four of you chose to make your senior projects to give back to each other, from Fiona's rock tribute to Rose's violin slideshow. Jacob and Julian patiently facilitated three days of class discussion to help you choose the title of your class book, Circle Time, because you wanted a title that every person in your class was in on the joke. You've marched for science, never again, and Black Lives Matters, standing up for what you believe in. You've had internships at your temple, churches, and Bellevue City Hall, offering your best to others in your community. At times, engaging is exhausting. You will sustain yourself by focusing on the small joys and wonders of life, such as Grace's chicken being attacked by an eagle twice and surviving. 
finding gratitude and delight in ordinary moments and things, like James's snack pocket, acknowledging others by saying, thanks a latte, giving giant hugs like Megan and working hard like Megan, doing meaningful work that you believe in like Anna, connecting and laughing like we've done together every day in class this year. All of these actions and mindsets strengthen you and your larger community. Your parents and families also sustain you. Thank you, parents, for all you've done for your amazing children. I've learned so much from you as an educator and parent. Thanks to Bill, I know that it's important to bring a rainbow cake to school for a spontaneous party that says school rocks in frosting. Natalie and Chris, you've shown me how to balance support and holding your child accountable so he can grow. Parents, all of you have consistently shown up for student-led conferences and exhibitions, Freedom Project Days, Project Presentation Nights, and even online senior defenses. Thank you. Class of 2020, when I met you and taught you last year in US history and witnessed you side-talking with gusto, throwing coins across the classroom, haranguing substitute teachers, and eating my chocolate birthday cake with no hands, I knew you were something special. I'm going to miss you tremendously. It's been an honor and a pleasure to teach and learn with you. From all of us at Big Picture, we send our big love and support with you as you go out into the world. From time to time, come back and connect with us again. Please join me in welcoming assistant principal and former middle school teacher and advisor to this class, Matt Stokes. Thank you, Anna. <sighs> to the big picture class of 2020, thank you for allowing me a few words to honor your accomplishment. More than anything, you deserve an enormous congratulations and also a sentiment of personal appreciation and gratitude. Your class welcomed me into teaching when you started middle school as sixth graders and you greeted me back again at the start of your senior year. Thank you and what a privilege it is to speak to you. I just wanna come out and say it, you're graduating into a difficult time. The world's challenges are now more than ever your challenges. You didn't create these problems. And it's your choice what you make of the opportunity to make things better. See, there's a word I refer to sometimes in times of difficulty. Kintsugi, golden repair. It's the Japanese art of repairing broken pottery by mending the areas of breakage with gold. It's to take something broken, to turn it into something beautiful. See, I believe these fractures in our world and our country and our community are not permanent. And while the solutions are not easy, I believe that you, the big picture class of 2020, is distinctly qualified to find solutions and create something beautiful here at home, across America, and around the world. Sometimes we make new things and sometimes we make things new. But why am I so confident in you and why this isn't boilerplate graduation stuff? Because you've changed me. And you've made me a better version of myself. So whatever is next for you, I know you'll do it well. And I know you'll do it right. And I know you'll continue to make a profoundly positive impact on all the people in your lives. Lastly, I want to take a moment to recognize a classmate who's not with us today, Natalia Massar. And may your courage and your strength be with us all, now more than ever, to help us achieve your vision of the world you desire. To the class of 2020, please continue to share your light and your love and your kindness that you so boldly bestowed on me, your teachers, and to each other. And to the senior class of 2020, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Congratulations. And it gives me great joy to introduce our student selected student speaker, Eleanor Lindenmare.
This is never how I imagined giving this speech. And those of you who know me know, I have imagined it a lot. I thought you would all be here in front of me. I'd be hot under the stage lights. My nerves would have just started up as I remembered it's been a while since I gave a speech in front of this many people. I didn't imagine standing on the stage, staring out at an empty amphitheater, knowing graduation is still over a week away. I didn't imagine that I wouldn't be able to look you in the eye if I referenced a joke that only we knew. I didn't imagine sitting in my living room watching myself give this speech and presumably critiquing myself as I'm sure that's what I'm doing right now. But the really unexpected thing about this speech is the fear. Not the fear of speaking or of standing on a stage or even of graduating, for I am no longer afraid of those things. But the fear of words. Words mean a lot to me. I try my best to use them with intention and to use them well. But my fear as I sat down to write this speech and as I say it now, is that my words are not good enough for all of you. That my words are not enough to encapsulate the wondrous miracle that is my class. I originally had a different speech planned, a wittier one, a cockier one, but I think I'll leave the humor to Grace. She's always been better at it than I am. All I can give you is this, the thing I most cherish and fear in the world, my words. I hope they live up to you. It is likely no surprise to anyone that I am the one up here. Y'all picked me, after all. Years of being group leader, taking over lessons from confused subs, conferencing with the administration, and bombarding you with emails, and more recently text messages, once I devised a survey to get all of your phone numbers, has made me the unofficial spokesperson of the senior class. So now, once again, all eyes are on me, and my voice is the one being heard. This is not what I wanted for us. Maybe I'm biased, but I believe we are the best class that Big Picture has seen graduate so far. We are the most connected, most involved, most ambitious. So it is unfair that we get the least celebration. But that is the lot we drew, and I believe we are stronger for it. Because of the strange nature of these times, I'm not sure y'all are getting everything that you deserve and that you have earned over these past four years. So there are some things I want to make sure that the audience knows. James Niaga asks brilliant, insightful questions that always stretch my understanding of a topic. Casey Christensen puts her whole heart into everything that she does, and it is a truly beautiful heart. Grace Huxtable is the most determined and passionate person that I know. Jay Haugen is incredibly eloquent and charismatic when he needs me and is an asset in a group project. Connor Nolan is a writer and an artist and made the decision to pursue his passions, something I admire him greatly for. Elijah Lumiere threw himself into our school community as soon as he joined. And now he's ASB president and Bethany's first ever intern. Morgan Sullivan fights for what she believes in, be it attending the climate rally last year or being one of the peaceful protesters just two weeks ago. Johann Caesar has put his face in a chocolate cake and always speaks first when we're sitting in an awkward circle, breaking the tension. Kai Robertson has been here for the least amount of time, but most of us would swear he's always been here. He infiltrated us very successfully. Joey Dennis is a light 
and the heart of our community. Class wouldn't be half as fun without him. Kyla Kowalchuk knows herself and takes care of herself, something that's so important and most of us are not masters of. Cindy Fu made a Discord server for our entire class and spent ages dealing with paperwork and bureaucracy to make sure we get our senior sweatshirts, even with the pandemic. Anna Maria Malins is going to the Joffrey Ballet School, which is a big deal in the ballet world. And I know someday Anna will be a big deal in the ballet world too. Elias Berry has a gift for acting and comedy. I mean it, it's a gift. It is incredible to watch him perform. He has a stage presence like no one I've ever known. Jacob Koffler has the weirdest things happen to him, especially when it comes to roommates. And he is excellent at sharing those stories, always leaving us all laughing. Julian Dreher knows everything about everything, from politics to underclassmen gossip. Rose Huntelman co-taught one of our lessons with Anna this year and left no doubt in all our minds that she will make a fantastic teacher. Jay Robles is always talking, but somehow he is always saying something worth listening to. Vikram should not be graduating with us, they should be graduating next year. And that shows how truly extraordinary they are. Fiona Jacobson started class this year in the middle of a project, but she jumped right in and wowed everyone, including Senator Kuderer. Tycho Berry's famous words are, you're fine. But he truly does always help me believe I am, in fact, fine. Matthew DeShazo is constantly striving to make himself and the world better. Joey Scholl is often quiet, but he speaks in startling bursts of wit that I wish more people got to hear. Amanda Jo Lona is fearless, and I hope to be half as fashionable and confident as she is one day. Megan Yanez wants to be a pediatrician, and her quiet smile and easy laugh is going to make her a great one. Oh, and me, the unofficial spokesperson of the senior class. We are the big picture class of 2020. The graduates about to be sent into the world, a changed world, a world in crisis, a world at a tipping point. They are 25 of the most in passionate, intelligent, talented, funny, incredible people I have ever met. They deserve all your applause, silently, of course, as they can't see you, all of your well wishes, and of course, their diplomas. We are the big picture class of 2020. We did not have sports teams or homecoming. We didn't get to go to prom, arrange senior pranks, though I know ours would have been brilliant, or even say goodbye in person. But we are the big picture class of 2020, and we were already going to change the world. And well, now the world is falling apart, and it needs our passion, energy, compassion, and leadership more than ever. So. Big picture, class of 2020. Why don't we go rebuild it? Wow. <clears throat> Those speeches were amazing and so heartfelt. I feel grateful to have such talented and articulate students and staff in our school community. It's now time for something fun, our senior slideshow. I'd like to extend a thank you to Eleanor Swords, Karen Pennywell, and Margaret McLean for preparing today's slideshow. 
and a big thanks to all the parents for submitting those baby photos. Enjoy. Slideshow is always one of my favorite parts of graduation. Thank you again to all who contributed to putting it together. I'd like to now acknowledge the seniors who are recipients of various awards this year. Each year we award seniors with the Presidential Education Awards for Excellence, Academic Achievement, and Citizenship. These awards are sponsored by the U.S. Department of Education in partnership with the National Association of Secondary School Principals. 
and were developed to help principals recognize and honor students who have achieved high academic goals through hard work and dedication to learning. The first award is the President's Award of Outstanding Academic Excellence. This award recognizes academic success in the classroom. To be eligible, students must be in the 12th grade with a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or higher. Recipients from the class of 2020 are Jacob Koffler, Rose Huntelman, Cindy Fu, Grace Huxtable, V. Kadem, Kyla Kowalczyk, Eleanor Lindenmeyer, Amanda Jo Lona, Elijah Lumiere, Kai Robertson, and Jaden Robles. Our second award is the President's Award for Outstanding Academic Achievement. This award recognizes students that show outstanding educational growth, improvement, commitment, or intellectual development in their academic subjects, but who do not meet the criteria for the Educational Excellence Award. Its purpose is to encourage and reward students who give their best effort, often in the face of special obstacles. Recipients selected by our faculty this year are Casey Christensen, Anna Maria Malins, and Megan Yanis. Our third award today is the President's Award for Citizenship. This prestigious honor recognizes students who inspire and encourage other students to strive to be better citizens. The three recipients selected by the Big Picture faculty are Johan Cesar Castellanos, Morgan Sullivan, and Megan Yanis. Our last set of awards are the three special school awards given each year at graduation, which are connected to the three symbols in our school's crest, the key, laurel, and the panther. Each embodies a core feature of our school and is used to acknowledge a student or students who have represented these attributes during their time at Big Picture. These award trophies, plaques, and symbols will be delivered to our recipients within the next week. The Panther Pride Award is given first. A panther is a fierce but tender, loving, and protective animal to their young. Our Panther Pride Award recipients are students who are leaders in our community here at Big Picture and have been the voice of ASB and their senior class. They are strong listeners, community builders. They show empathy and compassion and act with integrity. For leadership with integrity, the Panther Pride Award of 2020 goes to Elijah Lumiere and Eleanor Lindenmeyer. The Key of Knowledge Award. This is award is given to a student or students with the highest academic achievement for each graduating class. The key is an object symbolic of opening and closing powers. It represents knowledge, mystery, initiation, and curiosity. The ancient Greeks used the key as a symbol for knowledge and life, scholarship and wisdom. This year's recipients have both maintained perfect cumulative 4.0 GPAs for their entire high school career. Please join me in recognizing Rose Huntelman and Jacob Koffler. And lastly, the Laurel Award. Laurel is an ancient symbol of distinction and serves to remind our students that they are becoming part of a long and noble tradition of distinguished scholars. Laurel leaves symbolize victory, peace, and triumph. For our award winners tonight, these, studies, these students embody these characteristics. They have overcome obstacles, excelled in areas of passion, and maintained respect and integrity under diverse situations. They strive to help their classmates work together better and have contributed significantly to our broader community while achieving high academic honors. This year's recipients of the Laurel Award are Jaden Robles and Cindy Fu. Congratulations to all of our student award recipients. I am so very proud of your accomplishments. It is now time for the formal presentation of the class of 2020. 
It's my distinct pleasure to certify that the seniors present and participating in the ceremony have completed all of the requirements for high school graduation as stipulated by the state of Washington and by the Bellevue School District Board of Directors. With tremendous pride and appreciation, I present to you now the members of the class of 2020. I'd like to welcome Bellevue School Board Director, Dr. Francine Weist, to accept the class. Thank you, Principal Spindler. Dear family, friends, teachers, staff, and most of all, the Big Picture Class of 2020. Many of you entered Big Picture when it was still new, just in its third year. You knew you wanted something different from your education, and you seized this opportunity. You were the early pioneers, creating something both rigorous and relevant. At Big Picture, you students are at the center of your own education. You have been surrounded by educators and supported by parents who value personalization, adult world connections, shared leadership and responsibility, project-based and service learning. You have spent time in the community under the tutelage of mentors and are assessed on exhibitions and demonstrations of achievement on motivation, and on the habits of the mind, the hand, and the heart. This has been made more challenging during quarantine and the uncertainty ahead. But we do know a few things. One, you will have a worldwide bond and the distinction of being in the class of 2020. Two, people will continue to have interest in you and your class for years to come. And three, you still have a lot of control. The vision of the Bellevue School District is to affirm and inspire each and every student to learn and thrive as creators of their future world. I think big picture students must have served as the model for this statement. You have forged your own paths and created your world of today, and I have no doubt you will continue to do so for the world of tomorrow. And the world needs you to shape what happens next. We see that every week can draw us into a scenario that we might not have been expecting. We may not know the details, but we do know that you will be dealing with the next crisis, disruption, or opportunity. And even though we are in a communal crisis, we do have our particular circumstances that are affect our experiences. And so you have a unique perspective to offer. During quarantine, I hope you found time to be comfortable with yourself, to reflect, to pick up a new skill or hobby, to appreciate the things we took for granted, and to see situations in a new light, because these are rare gifts for your future. Now, a senior was lamenting how COVID-19 was a relentless disruption, first closing school buildings for a few weeks, then physical distancing for the rest of the year, and perhaps misery still going forward. Her father took her into the kitchen and put three pots of water on the stove. And she said, Dad, you know, in quarantine, I've learned how to bake my own bread from my own sourdough starter. I don't need a lesson on boiling water. He smiled as the water heated, and he added a potato to one pot, an egg to another, and tea leaves to the third, and asked her to wait. So they watered their plants, they sewed a few face masks, and they checked if disinfecting wipes were back in stock yet. And 20 minutes later, he took out the potato and egg, he put them on a plate, and he poured tea into a cup and asked her what she observed. A potato, an egg, and tea. What else, she said. What has changed, he asked. Oh, said the savvy big picture high school student soon to be graduate. The hard potato is now soft, the fragile egg is now hard, and the tea leaves have made something new. Yes, said the father. They all faced the same challenge, the same adversity, and responded differently. So will you be the hard and unyielding potato 
until you face the heat and go soft and feeble? Or will you be the fragile egg who becomes hard-hearted in the face of adversity? Or will you be the tea bag who can transform the situation into something wonderful? And she reflected, well, before the pandemic, I would have known the right answer is to be the tea. I could have created a whole internship on figuring out whether I should be mellow or caffeinated, loose tea or in a bag, or maybe substituted coffee. But now I know and can admit that the reality is sometimes I'm feeling stuck in my ways like the potato, and I could use a new situation to soften me a little, not to mush. And sometimes I'm vulnerable like the egg. And while I don't want to harden my heart to the point that I can't feel anything, sometimes I do need to stiffen my resolve or grow stronger in the face of challenge. And sometimes I do feel small and alone, just like a loose leaf of tea. So I'll need to remember that I have the power within me, by myself or with others, to transform a whole mess of hot water into something better. And so for you too, there are many people who want to clink a toast to your cup of tea. The teachers, staff, family, friends who have been a part of your journey to this special day. So on behalf of all of us, so proud of all of you, I toast the big picture high school class of 2020 with best wishes for getting through those challenges that inevitably lie ahead. Here's to being creators of your future world. On behalf of the Bellevue School District Board of Directors, I affirm students participating in today's graduation ceremony meet or exceed the Bellevue School District and Washington State graduation requirements. And so I hereby officially accept the graduating class of 2020 from Big Picture High School. Congratulations. Hi, everyone. We are really live now. It's the time you've all been waiting for to see each of our graduates um, introduced and the opportunity for them to say a few words uh, to everyone in the audience. Um, that was certainly a different experience to watch graduation here from my office, um, still in our my gown. Um, it's been graduation all day as we've taken photos of many seniors who have come. Um, so we're thrilled nevertheless to recognize our outstanding uh, class of 2020 and these amazing 26 individuals. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who spoke uh, this afternoon, um, Grace, Eleanor, Matt, Anna, and Dr. Weiss uh, for those inspiring words um, and that super awesome video that Kyla put together for the class um, and the slideshow that so many people contributed to. So as we move into the formal presentation of the class of 2020, each advisor is going to come on and introduce their seniors and read a short statement that someone close to each of our students has submitted to us. Um, there will be a slide for each student with their picture, uh, their future plans, and a quote that they've given. Um, and then the advisors will give each student opportunity again to say something um, if they choose to uh, out to the audience um, today. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. So our first advisory celebrating our seniors today is Karina's advisory, and that will include Johan, Jacob, Cindy, Kyla, Kai, and Jaden. So Karina, take it away. Our first graduate this afternoon is Johan Cesar Castellanos. Johan, this is from your mom. Thank you for being a part of my life. I want you to know that I accept, honor, and love each part of you. Your kindness, compassion, silliness, frustration, distraction, creativeness, intelligence, cooperation, and so on. Seeing you grow in many areas of your life, it's been wonderful as an experience for me. I believe in you 
and in the great potential that you have to accomplish whatever you want. I have seen this over time and today is one of them. Congratulations for completing high school. You did it. Johan, would you like something to say? I do, in fact, have something to say. Um, hi guys, thank you for watching. I know I have a couple friends uh, watching on Discord. Uh, shout out Ankit, Noah, and Sunny. And I mean, it's crazy that we're doing this online. The realization, uh, as you said on earlier, is gonna hit me Definitely later, because never imagined we'd be doing it online. But either way, uh, regardless if it's online or if it's in person or if it's online, um, I'm still really thankful to have been part of the Big Picture family. And uh, I hope that one day I can come back as a mentor. Um, and yeah, because I, you know, it's part of the family. But yeah, I love you guys. Up next is Jacob Koffler. Jacob, this is from your parents. Congratulations, Jacob, on this milestone amid uncertain times. We're proud of everything you've accomplished. There's so much that we can say about the wonderful young man that you have become. You have a kind heart. You feel compassion for all living things, always showing care, kindness, and consideration. You are committed. You get straight A's in school, and you've been an extraordinary leader in youth group for years. You're self-sufficient, traveling to far off places in your own at times, never afraid to ask for help if you need it. You are attending UW in the fall and we expect to see great things from you in the future. Jacob, would you like to say something? Uh, sure, I just wanna say that I know that this is not the graduation we all expected, but it's not a place or an event that makes this special, it's the people who all share it. So thank you everyone for coming. Next up is Cindy Fu. Cindy, this is from Ginny Kim. You have always been super good to me and have been continuously supportive of me. I am really have glad I'm really glad to have gotten to know you. The little business cards with your art on them that you sent years ago are still my treasures. They never fail to bring a smile on my face when I'm feeling low. I also really like the art you've been posting lately, and your styles and techniques always amaze me. From years and years back, you are always one of my favorite artists and someone to look up to. Congratulations on graduating. Cindy, would you like a few seconds to address the audience? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so despite many roadblocks faced along the way at my time at Big Picture, I'm glad I was able to attend this school for the last seven years. I've met a lot of amazing peers and teachers here and I've created a close-knit bond that um, I don't think I'd have the opportunity to have at a larger school. To wrap everything up, I hope our class will remember this short but sweet Chinese phrase. Xiu hua piao piao. Thank you. Up next is Kyla Kowalchuk. Kyla, this is from Alex. Years ago, tribes roamed the earth. Every tribe had a magic person. Eventually, the tribes disbanded and dispersed, but every so often you meet a magic person and every so often you meet someone from your tribe. That's how I felt when I met Kyla Kowalchuk. Although I didn't know it then, we met in preschool, but some infant instinct in me knew she was special. Kyla is truly kind, a word that is overlooked in importance, but a rarity in finding. She is honest, selfless, and has this magical quality about her that can make a person feel at ease. I am so proud of her and I wish her the best graduation. I'm sure she looks beautiful. Kyla, would you like to say a few things to the audience? Uh, yes, I wanted to say thank you to my teachers, parents, friends, and family for supporting me throughout high school. I've had such an amazing experience and fun experience, and I'm so excited to see what's to come in the future. Up next is Kai Robertson. Kai, this was written by me, <laughs> Karina. Kai is a quiet rock star who knows what he wants and is not afraid to go after it. He has the skills to do anything he wants, but his choice to go into filmmaking at Montana State shows his commitment to pushing the boundaries of life and living it to the fullest. I can't wait for him to share his artistic expression through film with all of us. I know that he's gonna make big picture community very proud. Kai, would you like to say something to the, to the audience? Uh, yeah, no, I haven't been at Big Picture for a super long time, um, but in the time that I've been a student, 
um, it's been a great experience uh, meeting all sorts of really, really great people and being part of a great community. So thank you to all of you. Up next is Jay Robles. Jay, these are quotes in descending order from Rose Huntelman, Tiffany Robles, Eleanor Lindenmeyer, and this whole thing is from Cameron. Jay exemplifies everything I admire. He is authentic, courageous, and kind. He is graceful and resilient, pensive, rarely speaking without his desired message in mind. His morals are strong, but with flexibility, leaving space for imagination that is yet to reach him. Jay is a rising voice in equity and social justice. Though there are moments of strife and hopelessness, he presses on in pursuit to restore power and pride to those who have lost it. Jay is loyal, kind, deeply empathetic, and a fighter to his core. Jay, I hope this next part of your journey is one full of growth and gratification. Jay, would you like a few seconds to address the audience? Yes. Um, I just want to say that I know that I wouldn't be the person that I am today without all of you. Um, the big picture community has has been such a supportive and loving place for me and I'm so grateful for everyone, um, for everyone that's here today and everyone that's been a part of my journey and um, I'm really looking forward to sharing my future with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Karina. Up next is Daniel and his two advisees, Matthew DeShazo and Jay Haugen. Take it away, Daniel. Sure. First up, I'd like to introduce Matthew DeShazo. This is a message from your dad. It is hard to put into 100 words the things that can be said about Matthew. Over the last 18 years, I've heard him referred to as loyal, creative, talented, funny, compassionate, competitive, goofy, loving, defier of gravity, wacky, fun, cool, spiritual, influential, athletic, and smart. But I believe what best describes Matthew and his outlook on life are the words as recorded in the book of James in the Christian New Testament. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever, you're, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Matthew, would you like to say a few words? One second, I gotta breathe. Okay, um, uh, I don't think I could have made it if it weren't for every single person that's here um, and every single person that I've met along the way. So thank you so much. I would like to also introduce Jay Haugen. Uh, Jay, this is a message from your dad. Here we are at the end of a 12 to 16 or possibly 24 step journey. As parents, we guide our children on low risk paths, on low risk paths, so we avoid the boomerang basement effect. But that which helps us sleep at night might rob our children of a soul filling life of passion or at least a life of choice. Jay is not the type to follow that guidance. He embodies passion for his life, his direction, his soul filling journey. Jay is being bold. He is 100% committing to his bold path of being an artist. And one day you'll be playing a game or watching a movie and it will be Jay's ideas splashed across the screen. Thank you, Daniel. I now pleased to introduce Kevin Roberts who will present his senior, Connor Nolan. Thank you, Bethany. Uh, it's my pleasure to present Connor Nolan. Uh, this note, Connor, was written by your brother, Tristan. Connor, you've been by my side for as long as I can remember. You've always had my back, even when I didn't have yours. From listening to me drool on for hours about something you're not interested in, or just being there so I can vent on superficial problems that at the time seemed so important. I wish I had more words to say to you, but I can say this. You are my best friend for life, my guardian angel, and my knight in shining armor. I know I was supposed to fill those shoes, but they fit you better. From your brother, Tristan. Congratulations, Connor. Would you like a few seconds to address the audience? Heck yeah, I would, Kevin. So, um, first of all, I'd just like to say 
things are weird right now. So I'm glad that modern technology has allowed us to be able to talk with each other despite the obvious barriers that have appeared in front of us. So as the sole senior in Kevin's advisory, I'd like to say that I agree with Eleanor when I say that we are the best senior class that has ever come out of big picture. I could have come up to any of you, said anything, and you would have talked to me about it. So thank you all and go Panthers. Thank you, Connor and Kevin. We will now turn to Amanda's advisory and she will present Elias Berry, Amanda Jo Lona, and Joey Shaw. I would like to present Elias Berry. Um, this card is from Sylvie Crow. In the years that Elias Berry has been a participant slash volunteer slash leader at the Bellevue Youth Theater, he has shown that he is thoughtful, generous, and brave. He is fearless on stage as he takes on a character and has given so many of his roles depth and dimension. This is because of his empathy. Elias cares so deeply and strongly for people. I hope he carries that with him in all his future adventures. It has been an honor to watch him grow and to be a part of his journey at BYT. Elias, do you have any words for our audience? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say uh, thank you all for being on this adventure with me. Uh, it's been a blast. Thank you, Elias. I would like to present Amanda Jo Lona. Amanda, this card is from Lisa Weinman. Since gracing this planet with her presence, Amanda Jo has been a beacon of beauty, both inside and out. She is a leader who models the best of all things, strength, reason, courage, love, and fashion, to name a few. Amanda Jo has a passion for justice and a disdain for all in inequities. She will take up her cause and see it through, leaving no stone unturned in her effort to right a wrong. Amanda Jo challenges us to see beyond ourselves and into ourselves. Amanda Jo Lona is a game changer for her generation, a voice and a charge that will bring honor and redemption to those she chooses to serve. Amanda, do you have any words for our audience? I would like to thank you all, my classmates and my teachers. Um, each and every one of you has helped to shape who I am today. And I'm so proud of this class and all of our accomplishments. We're go-getters and we're change makers. And I can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you, Amanda. Oh, lastly, Joey Shaw. Um, the, these words are from your mom. Joey's big picture experience has been one of challenge, determination, and self-discovery. During an SLC around the end of seventh grade, Joey commented that the teachers around here actually say some interesting things. <laughs> Joey has been ventured, Joey has since ventured with you all into reading, writing, critical thinking, projects, D&D games, providing music at dances, student government, and even a few perfect attendance awards along the way. Above all, Joey has learned that he is industrious, complex, and a great writer who cares deeply about people in this sometimes difficult world. Bon courage, Joey, in your next fascinating chapter of your life, Nostravia. Joey, we love you. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, Amanda. We are now going to head into Eva's advisory, where she will introduce Rose Huntelman, V. Kadam, Anna Maria Mallins, James Niaga, and Morgan Sullivan. Um, first, I'd like to introduce Rose Huntelman. This card is from Mom and Dad. Rose, every day you list your tasks and write your inspiration on the wall. Every day you stake out who you are, even as you worry how different it makes you. Like when your siblings were homeschooling, you decided school was the right path for you. You challenge teachers and classmates with respect and love. We've watched with awe how you take initiative in so many ways. You think deeply and approach people you disagree with, with respect. Today, we're proud of who you choose to be, and tomorrow we will be proud of who you choose to be. We trust you. Rose, would you like to take a few seconds to address the audience? I, I want to thank my family 
for supporting me through everything and our teachers, especially Anna, for never giving up on us and teaching us more than we even know that we know. And I want to thank our class for all the craziness and the fun. You all know how much you mean to me, so I'll just leave you with a few words that you might find familiar. Be you, be kind, love anyway, learn forever and always because it's awesome. And remember, you matter. Thank you, Rose. Up next is V Kaden. This is from Elise. V is not only one of the most hardworking people I have ever met, V is one of the kindest people I have ever met, constantly raising the bar, fighting their battles with grace and empathy. They are an inspiration to everyone. Their hardworking yet understanding demeanor not only makes them a superior leader, but a superior friend. I wish them the best of luck in their new journey, for I know they will do great things. V, would you like to take a few seconds to address the audience? I would, yeah. Um, I'd like to thank my family, both at Big Picture and at home. Y'all have stuck around with me and encouraged me to grow in graduating with people I consider part of my family as well, the seniors of 2020. Um, I don't really think I'd have made it this far without you guys. And I'd also like to thank my friends. Y'all have supported me in everything that I've done, pretty much. Um, listen to my constant rambles and screaming, whether over text or over call. Um, always brought a smile to my face whenever I felt down. And no matter what has happened, you've given me a home and a shoulder to cry on when I thought I had none. And I'm eternally grateful for that. So thank you. Thank you. Um, up next is Anna Maria Malins. Anna Maria is one of the hardest workers and kindest people I've ever met. I'm so excited for her to go out into the world. I know that whatever she does, she will make a huge difference and be a positive force in so many people's lives. I'm so proud of the person she is today. This has been a strange year, but she's grown and flourished. Congratulations, Anna, and know that everyone at Emerald Ballet loves and supports you. From Erin. Anna Maria, would you like a few seconds to address the audience? Yeah. Um... So I just want to thank all my family and friends who supported me through all these years. Um, they really made the person who I am today. I especially want to thank my mom. <laughs> um, she's my best friend and she supports me all the way through. And um, I wouldn't trade anything in the world um, for her. Um, also, I'm so excited for the next journey of my life and can't wait to share it with all of you. Um, to the rest of my senior class, congratulations. And I know you guys are going to do big things. And for my family and friends who are watching, thank you for coming. And I love you and miss you all. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Congratulations. Up next is James Nyaga. James, you don't know this, but you and your 100 watt smile are a big part of the reason I feel welcome at Big Picture School. And not only here, but also because we live in the same neighborhood. When I bump into you with your friends at QFC or at Semena, your way of making others feel welcome is a gift, and I'm grateful you've shared it with me. Your future college sure is lucky because you'll soon be sharing that welcoming smile with others there. And big picture school will shine a little dimmer without you. From Holly. James, would you like a few seconds to address the audience? Sure, yeah. <laughs> so, um, big picture for me has been surprisingly really fun from all the crazy adventures we had. Um, I remember one time we threw an airplane across the classroom and had soup on it, and we're trying to get it to one each other. So just all the teachers just interacting with us, I feel like the teachers of Big Picture by far has been the best experience. They're just the fact that how much they care and they took time to Big Picture has been a lot of fun. I gotta say thank you. Up next is Morgan Sullivan. Morgan, this is from Coach Allen. I've known Morgan Sullivan since she was around 12 years old. Morgan was quiet on the outside, but ultra competitive. For years, I've been blessed to be able to watch that quiet girl develop into an outgoing, fun-loving, committed, and talented young woman. On the softball field, Morgan was the dominant power player, 
home run hitter, and an intense as any player I have ever coached. As a person, Morgan has made everyone around her better. In a few words, I'm so proud of her, always will be. Morgan, would you like a few seconds to address the audience? Uh, yeah, so um, although this year didn't go quite as we planned, I'm still so thankful for having you guys in my life uh, during our time in school together. I would not want it any other way. We truly are a different breed of seniors and I can't wait to see what amazing things everyone will venture off to. I'm also so glad we got in a lot of our senior pranks last year. Love y'all. <laughs> Thanks, Morgan. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you, Eva, and everyone in your advisory. Three more advisories to go. I'd like to welcome Lance to present Casey Christensen, Elijah Lumiere, and Megan Yanez. Turn your cameras on and be ready, everyone. Go for it, Lance. Thank you, Bethany. Uh, it's my honor to present my three seniors, starting with Casey Christensen. Casey, words from your dad, Charles. By the time Casey was a toddler, I knew that three things, knew that three things about her would always be true. One, Casey was always going to follow her own path. Second, once Casey became determined to accomplish something, she would no, she would, no matter what the odds. And lastly, she was going to follow and often lead with her passions, her passion for people around her the causes that move her, and the art that inspires her. Because of these truths, Big Picture has been a great home for Casey these last five years. She has accomplished amazing things during her years at Big Picture. We are so proud of her, and we can't wait to see where her passions lead her next. Love you, kiddo, dad. Casey, do you have any words? Um, I wanna thank everyone who has been with me and supported me on my four-year high school journey. And I want to thank Lance for pushing me to finally get my 3.0, which I finally got. So, yeah, thank you, everyone. Congratulations, Casey. Thank you. Up next, it's my pleasure to introduce Elijah Lumiere. Elijah, hear words from Nina, our uh, health and PE teacher. Elijah, I'm so glad I got to know you this year. Thank you for always stopping by to say hi and making me laugh. I always appreciated it. You're going to do some pretty big things with your life, and I can't wait to see. You are so smart, talented, funny, and innovative. Thank you for all your hard work at BP and making school a better place to be. You're a rock star. I'm going to miss you next year. Nina. Elijah, would you like a few seconds to address the class? Sure. Um, I just want to say thank you uh, to everyone who made my experience here uh, very special. I've only been here for two years. Um, but as soon as I walked in through big picture stores, I felt welcome. Um, and so I just want to give a huge shout out to um, everyone who made my time here, um, really one in a lifetime. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to my uh, ASB um, that's been doing amazing work. You guys are making the school go around and I really appreciate it. So thank you to everyone. Thanks, Elijah. Congratulations. And finally, I'd like to present, it's my pleasure to present Megan Yanez. Megan, your dear Aunt Olga writes, congratulations on this enormous achievement. We are so proud of the young woman you have become, a kind, genuine, and loving person that is always thinking of others. You are about to embark on the great adventure that is college. Enjoy and cherish every moment and soak it all in. Soak in all it has to offer. Turn your dreams into goals and always remember that as long as you put your heart into whatever you do, you can achieve you can achieve anything. We love you and can't wait to continue celebrating the many milestones life has in store for you. Your biggest cheerleader, Aunt Olga. Megan, would you like a few seconds to address the class? Yes, I would. Um, I just want to say thank you to my advisor, Lance, for always supporting me and to all my teachers who have helped me over the years and for teaching me some of the most important things in life today. And thank you to all my family and friends for loving and caring for me always. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Congratulations, seniors. Thank you, Lance. I think Megan's house has the party over there. I see those balloons. Um, Anna is now going to introduce Joey Dennis, 
Julian Dreher, and Fiona Jacobson. You're up, Anna. Thank you, Bethany. Joey, this card is from Nina. Joey, the first time I met you was last year when you came into my room and gave James the biggest hug I had ever seen. I had no idea who you were, but I knew that you would be an unforgettable student. This memory embodies who you are as a person. You are unapologetically yourself. You stand up for what's right and what you believe in. You help your classmates see things from a different perspective, and you always helped me with anything I needed. Thank you for sharing your light with all of us, for being your goofy self, and for being so kind and respectful. These traits are so important and exactly what our world needs right now. It's people like you that give me hope for a future, and I can't wait to see the great things you accomplish. Congratulations on your graduation. We are so proud of you. From Nina. Joey, would you like to say something? I would love to say some things. All right. Uh, first off, I just want to thank uh, my parents and my teachers for helping me graduate. I don't think I would have been able to graduate, to be honest, uh, if it wasn't for their help, um, help pushing me and motivating me. Uh, and then I also want to thank all of my fellow seniors and uh, also teachers again uh, for just having, just being my friend, I guess, uh, friends all throughout the years. This, just the banter we all share with each other is pretty great. So thank you. Thank you, Joey. Julian Dreher. Julian, this card is from your mom and dad. You have accomplished so much in these last 17 years. We see the same adventurous eyes in you as we did when you were a child. Never afraid of trying something new. We believe in you, in your dreams, in your hopes and desires, your abilities, your potential, and all of the promise that resides within. Never look back on the choices you make because life is a journey. All experiences will continue to mold you into the person you are meant to be at each phase in your life. We are very proud not only of your achievements, but of the fine human being that you have become. Your soul is generous and kind. It illuminates so much goodness into a world often tinged by darkness. Julian, would you like to say a few words? I do. Uh, I just want to start off with thanking uh, my advisor, Anna, and my parents for really getting helping me get through high school. Um, also, I want to thank the senior class, and especially everybody that went down to Olympia, those in my group. We went through a lot, especially on that day. And especially to the, everybody in the senior class um, for getting through physics last year. I know it was tough. Thank you, Julian. Fiona Jacobson, this is from Jim Melu. Being separated from what you love is a great catalyst to cause you to devote your time and energy to the things you really value. It takes a special resilience to weather the challenges the class of 2020 has faced. But what seems to be key is remembering what is important and realigning your life around those things. Fiona's love for family, friends, and even water polo was tested in more than one way over these last four years. Though she has always tr shown tremendous promise, now more than ever, Fiona is ready to face whatever obstacles and challenges may come. This is a great day to show how proud we are of Fiona Jacobson. Fiona, would you like to share a few words? I just want to thank everybody who supported me and gotten me to where I am today. Thanks for making my high school experience eventful, memorable, and special. It was really a once in a lifetime experience. Thank you and love you all. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Anna and your superstar. So finally, Clinton's advisory is the last to go with his three outstanding seniors. Tycho Berry, Grace Huxtable, and Eleanor Lindenmeyer. All right, first, the genuine Tycho Berry. Tycho, this is from your brother Elias. A note, it's from your brother. Uh, Tycho Judas Berry, what can I say? This man's got it all. The looks, the hair, the genetic relation to one of the world's most prominent individuals, Elias. Never before has there been a smarter or intelligent, more intelligent person. I can't express how amazing Tycho is, but I will try to anyway. I want to take this time to read a poem that I, Clinton Stelfox, wrote about Tycho James Berry. Tycho is so cool. He's among the very best. He's my favorite. 
And there you have it. I, Clinton, have unequivocally confirmed that Tycho Jackalope Barry is a higher tier fella and my favorite student. Note that was from Elias. Tycho, would you like to say anything? Um, fantastic. I, I would. Um, I just want to say um, I, I thank you to all the all the all of my peers and everyone at Big Picture um, for the just th these seven years, especially the last four, have been a fantastic adventure, and I love you all. Uh, the next graduate, the dedicated Grace Huxtable, and this is from Eleanor Lindemeyer, who you'll hear from in a minute. Uh, Grace is smart, capable, witty, and good. Grace is not the same shy, funny girl I met on the first day of seventh grade, but the dedication she has for her passions now is the same as it was then. Grace cares so deeply about helping people, be it through firefighting or working with the BSD safety and security team. Grace puts so much energy into making the world better. I so admire Grace's unfailing determination through hardships and chaos. That, and of course, her unfailing ability to make me laugh through all these years. You have no idea what our friendship means to me, Gracie. I love you and always I will be, always be in your corner. From Eleanor. Eleanor, would you, or sorry, Grace, would you like to say anything? Sure. Um, I just want to say thanks to everyone, and uh, I'll miss you all so much. I'll miss the memes, and I'm glad that we have this awesome commentary in the background of our graduation ceremony. Um, thank you, everyone. The influential Eleanor Lindenmeyer. Eleanor, this is from your brother, Calvin. <laughs> Eleanor is the most badass person I know on and off campus. She does the things a regular teen does, like drive her brother around, go to the store, race mountain bikes, jump off cliffs, you know, the regular stuff. But on campus, she is not just a regular student. She is basically a super genius and could probably take over the world if she wanted to. And the world would be better off if she did. She is so dedicated to everything she does, she can literally do anything she wants to when she puts her mind to it. I am 100% sure she is going to kick ass as an adult. From your brother, Calvin. Eleanor, would you like to say anything? Yes, I would. Um, so I said most of what I wanted to say already in my speech earlier. I hope you all enjoyed it. I meant every word and all of you are that, all that, and more. But so there's this Taylor Swift song. It's called Long Live. And ever since I started listening to her, it's always reminded me of graduation. That's what it felt like it was about to me. And now we're finally there. So I just wanted to say in the wise words of Taylor Swift, it's the end of a decade, but the start of an age. And I cannot wait to see what this next age looks like for all of you. And I am so grateful to have taken part in your decade. Best of luck to everyone. I love you all. Well, thank you, Clinton and all the advisors. Um, I really missed high-fiving, handshaking, or hugging all of you as you walk across the stage, but we will have that opportunity again in the future. And now we're going to go to the fun part of turning the tassel. So I'm going to ask Elijah Lumiere, our ASB president, to join us to finalize the presentation of the class of 2020. Elijah, you're up. Thank you, everyone. My fellow graduates, on my mark, we will take our right hand and turn the tassel from the right side to the left side, signifying the end of our high school era. You may now turn your tassels. Congratulations, class of 2020, big picture seniors. We made it. Congratulations. Woo! 
Um, Congrats. So, it gives me oh, great pleasure to present to you the Bellevue Big Picture School Class of 2020. We wish you a wonderful future and hope to have an in-person celebration as soon as we can. We will send the recording of the commencement in the next few days for all of you to enjoy over and over and over again. Thank you to Tony, Karen, Margaret, Matt, the senior cheer squad, all our lovely parents, our staff, and the students for this most amazing <laughs> first virtual commencement we've ever had. Stay safe, stay connected, and know that we love you. So again, congrats, thank you all. We love you. Best wishes, class of 2020. Hope when you take that jump, you don't feel the fall. Hope when the water rises, you build a wall. Hope when the crowd screams out, you're screaming your name. Hope if everybody runs, you choose to stay. Hope that you fall in love and it hurts so bad. Where? 